charter and thank you everybody for sharing this time with us um i appreciate this opportunity i know that maybe it's quite harder to disconnect for our daily routine and maybe try to understand my bite english so thank you very much for sharing your time and your space with me and i appreciate this space with us of serve because it brings us the opportunity to talk a little bit about the things that we maybe we are not working today with these technologies or these features from Java, but the idea is to be familiarized with this new patterns matching with the new features that appear, for example, starting from Java 16, Java 17, and right now we are in like at the second preview for this functionality in the Java 18. Uh, thank you very much, and I appreciate. Um, so today we want to talk about the pattern matching. So what is pattern matching? <laughs> pattern matching means that we need to face several things in our daily Java routines, but we eventually know that there are some problems. I mean, for example, the code in order to read could be harder, could be complex, and the people that are working hardly in Java knows about that. So the idea with this pattern matching functionality is to fix some problems that appeared years ago in order to make the code understandable and easy to read, easy to understand, and maybe try to provide new features in order to understand the, uh, the, the code that the people is writing. And we as a Java developers or Java designers we need to improve our code day by day. So probably today you are not applying these new functionalities or new, new, new features, but the idea is try to investigate a little more. And probably if you have the opportunity to integrate these features with Java, maybe could be, or maybe this will be like a good exercise in order to make your code better. I mean, we are talking about try to apply different patterns in our code, but the idea or the biggest idea here is try to make our code better. Not only for you, for the people that probably will maintain the code or will fix the code in the future. So that's the idea behind this pattern matching functionality. Don't confuse with patterns or with matchers. Maybe it's quite confused because probably in the old versions of Java, I mean, for example, Java 1.5 or Java 1.8, we usually use it a lot, matchers and patterns. If you recall, this is like at the strings functionality in order to validate if some string match with some specific pattern. This is quite different and we will go deeper here with this functionality in a few minutes. So in order to show you these functionalities, I will create a new Java product. Uh, I will use IntelliJ. So let me just start a new project here. Okay, I will create a new Java project. Pattern. The important thing here is that I need to use a Java 1.8 or Java 18 in this case. As I mentioned, this functionality appears with Java 16, but there are a few functionalities that we need to include here for this demo session. I need to do another thing here and is set the language level for this project, like uh, to validate the pattern matching for switch. That is the second preview that we are working here. But eventually when you are using Java, uh, you just need to select Java 18 in your code, in your, in your preferences. But in this case, IntelliJ, uh, suggested to, to me to include this preview pattern matching for switch in order to make easier to understand. 
Again, as I mentioned, this is the second preview of this functionality. So probably in the next version of Java, Java 19, we will have these functionalities included in, in, the, in the code. So I will just create like a Java class. It's a simple Java class. So in this case, I will create a demo class. And you please confirm if you can see the code and is readable for you. Could be by chat or could be talking. Yeah, okay, yes, thanks. Yes, yes. Thank it's you. Really Perfect. So probably you notice or you will face this kind of situations before. So you could have like a method in you need to process some specific scenarios. So you can imagine that you have like a process and you send, for example, a number and you have, for example, like an, a string. Or uh, you can have, for example, an object. You can imagine that you can have like a a uh, method that is processing could be for example i don't know like a, for example a queue or some specific implementation that you can have in your code but the parameters that you are entering in your code could be uh, from a different class so i will implement here this code And here I just want to simple validate if the parameter enter instance of uh, integer, for example, I just want to say something that um, system that out that print adds an integer. And I will do the same validations for, for example, a string. And I will just put a string. And if the criteria doesn't match something like this, I will just put here like a byte. Um, I just wanted to validate and say that it's not clue. So I'm just pretty simple get that a parameter, validate the parameter, and I will put something like that. It's pretty simple. So as you can see here, I'm just testing and I'm just validating something like that. Integer, no clue. Just let me say something like that. And an object. Probably I just need to add something here in order to make like a good validation for here. And I will just run again. So this parameters validating and that's it. So this is like a, the most simple one that we used it before. It is working from i don't know started from java 1.4 or something like that and is it has been used before probably you have used it probably you included in your projects before but right now comes the beautiful thing so for example if i don't want it to use or i need to use or apply something interesting here with this string for example i don't want it to imprint this string just I just wanted to use for example width length the most usual way to get the length here is to I mean the usual way it could be for example to have param that length But here appears the problems with Java. I mean, 
we previously just made the validation here in order to validate that the parameter that we enter is an string but here say that okay what happened with the length it says that probably we just need to make like a cast in order to get something associated with one validation that we made before so in that case we need to say something like a string str, and i just need to make this cast validation and I just need to put the string. But I mean, it's quite annoying for us because, okay, I made the validation before and again, I need make the cast again in order to execute some function. That's the things that we wanted to use or we wanted to avoid when we are calling with Java. So here appears the beauty functionality here. So here, for example, appears the first topic that I wanted to talk with you. That is the object instance. So what happened with object instance? It's pretty simple. Here, when we are doing the instance of validations, I just call create this attribute or this parameter or this variable as here. And I don't need to, to use this line of code here again. So it's pretty simple. I just made the instance of validation like we usually made before. And I just need to, to add one variable at the end of the validation. And that variable contains of the or is of the type of, of the instance of validations. And the code is working again. Here we are just changing or switch this thing, but if you can see here, the code again is not quite easy to understand. Maybe if we need to, to add another validation, or maybe if we need to add another if sentence, probably the code will be larger and could be annoying to understand. So that's the beauty, that's the, uh, the, the feature that we wanted to impress here. So here is the object instance. It's pretty simple, like I mentioned it. The next thing that I wanted to talk is about the type matching. And in order to explain the type matching, I just wanted to use the symbol of this code. So I just wanted to rewrite this code in order to explain the functionality. So I just wanted to have the same functionality to process, but in this case, I just wanted to do something like this. I was wanna to express something like this. First of all, I just wanted to change my functionality here, like uh, this string. And I just wanted to return. And I just wanted to use the switch expression. And in the switch validation, I was I wanted to use the param. And here appears the functionality like I usually mention it. So in the switch, I just need a case that if you know the case, we need to have like the ability to validate these kind of things. But the pattern matching here that I wanted to use is to validate the classes, the instance of the class. So the first thing that I wanted to use is have like an integer. And I just wanted to have like a variable. This is like a, the new way to manage these switch case validations. And I just wanted to have like a return. Oops. And integer. I just wanted to add the other validation for the string. str. And I wanted to have this one. And like at the switch case validation, probably I just need to add like at the default branch. Okay, no clue. So I just rewrite my code from this if and else validations to a beautiful switch case validations. So I just want to remove this code here and I just want to print 
the result here. Again, pretty simple. I'm doing the validation of the parameter in the pattern switch. I just make like a, the object type validation here. In the switch case, it's possible that I need to use or create a variable here. It's not necessary to have that variable, but it's pretty recommended for it because probably you need to make like a validations or use that variables here. And it's also recommended to have like a, the default validations. And let's check how it we can see here in the code. Sure, sure. We can make this return is like a make like for example here void. And I don't need to return as you mentioned it something. So probably I just need here like at the system that out that print. There is no need to return. I just I just doing like a single validation here. Um, as I'm not returning anything here, I just need to remove the code. I don't know if that's clear for you, sorry. So again, I'm just doing the system print here. I just want to put the lines here just to have more clear the information in the output. So again, doing the switch validations using the type here, and I'm just printing some information. So that's the functionality talking about type matching. So we just switch the information. We just doing the validations using pretty similar like the instance of validation. Jorge, we have like just this. one. Okay. Jorge, we have just one question in our chat. Uh, should I read or you can? Yes, I, I've been reading the chat. Okay. Uh, can you make a type based switch without returning anything? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I just made that that that, that example for Cherry. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Um. So we, I just made this uh, simple validations, but uh, when we are working with objects in Java appears and other problems that probably you face it. What happened with the nulls? That is one thing that we usually face it when we analyze the code. So here I'm just sending another object, but in this case it's a null object. So let's check what happened with the nodes. Well, it's like a, the well now null pointer exception. So here comes one problem for us that the pattern matching functionality is pretty smart and can help everything for that. So I just can create something like that case. No. And I just want to use this one. And I just have this validations here. So we just can try to make these validations using this node. That is the next part of the validation that we wanted to use, the nodes matching. You can apply no matter of the precedence of the case, could be in the first part, could be in the second part, the, there is no restriction of use the no validations here. But here appears another beauty, beauty thing here in the Java. 
and in this functionality you can append or you can add different functionalities in the same case validation so you can have this one for example no and no integer so here we have two different validations in the same case instance no and integer and let's check what happened here as we are not doing anything with the value i'm just using and printing the information here no matter what happened here i'm just doing this validation oh good question vaseline to be honest with you i don't know but let me just try to check but i will roll back here but my best feeling is that this null validation goes to the default goes to the null here let me try to check what you are trying to check the Selene is trying to do this process here with this null something like this double null so i'm just saying that this null is the type of double so let's check what happened with the code again is not doing anything here but you mentioned it's something that is really important basically there is not double but i wanted to spell it a little bit in a few more slides so here i'm just getting the null here so is doing by this path by the null path but if i use it like a double for example let me just try to do another different one for example a double it can be 1.0 or for example another number it could be i don't know for example 100 length double and length validations this needs to go by the default one and i just wanted to print here the value um param as you can see here we have the first one as the null that we send like a double the second one there is no type match for that one for the 1.0 there is no match type for the 100 length we have one integer match with this one and also we have the match for the string and again one null and the match for the object just arthur there is possible to have this kind of genetic classes but we need to go deeper with another different topics but yeah it's probably maybe in the next slides we can have this uh, demonstration about this let me just go a step by a step but yeah it's possible so here we are doing the validations and we are doing the null validations but maybe it can clarify what is uh, happening in the next features so here appear the terms of the dominance so for show the dominance feature we can use the toggle and the float that we used before so here again as you can see here we have like uh, the double validations and the float validations so we can have like uh, for example here that's a double and maybe we can have another different response here with these ones so the first one is a null the second one is a double so we are doing the validation for integer and double but there is like a super class its name is a number so here we are doing a different validations an integer a double and one super class that its name is number and with the number i will match a different classes that doesn't match with an integer and double but it's linked with a number let's see what happened here 
with this one that I didn't uh, catch it before. I just used this number validation. I just wanted to put here the number plus param just to show what is the number that we are testing in this case. Let me just put one space here to make easier to understand. So here with the 100 length is getting the number, but we are using or we are testing the dominance feature. So here comes another beautiful functionality for this pattern matching. What happened if I move this number in the first case validation? So here again, as I mentioned, a number is like at the super class, the parent class, and integer and double are uh, subclasses of the number, so are more specific than number. So here, uh, Java is saying to us that, okay, the first validation that you are using is number, so there is no need to make these validations or there is no matches because all subclasses from number not need to be evaluated. So here appears the beautiful dominance. So if you need to make another different validations, no matter if our superclasses or there are some specific hierarchy associated with these validations, we need to add these validations in like a, a good order in order to understand what we are doing. So the first thing is try to analyze what are the hierarchy of the classes and the second one is to use that hierarchy in order to make our pattern matching understandable. Um, if I try to use, for example, with the double, I get the same error. I'm doing the validation with integer plus with the number and double is like a subclass or a specific implementation of number. So it's saying that, okay, you have a problem and you need to check the dominance because number is process is, is previous of the double validation. So this is like a, the, the correct way in order to use the dominance pattern. I'm using like a, the validation for numbers, integers and double, but you can imagine this, um, th this implementations uh, using your implementation for classes or interfaces, functionality and the inheritance associated with that. Um, another thing that I wanted to explain is about the completeness and what completeness means. Okay, in order to show you completeness, I want to write another different class. So I just wanted to include, for example, like a Seal interface. And I just wanted to have like, for example, time of day. It's a simple interface. I'm not doing any specific. I just wanted to create a final class uh, that its name is day time. That implements time of day. And I just wanted to create another class that its name is night time that implements day for time time of day. So I just wanted to rewrite my code here. I just wanted to use this parameter in order to only validate types or instances of this type of day. So I just wanted to change here this type of day. And in this parameter, okay, I just need to add the validations for this one. So for example, case, daytime, as we are doing the print, just let me do this something, it's day. And in the nighttime, It's night. I will now to use the return again 
just to show you something here. String. Um, I just wanted to change something here. I just wanted to use the list, for example, arise as the list. Uh, so, for example, I could use, for example, new daytime. New data. And I just wanted to browse it so I could use, for example, stream. And I was wanted to have, for example, like the map for this one. So I could use, for example, this is demo that process. And that's it. Uh, yes, probably you just need to, to use something like this one, it's the return, so I could use, for example, for each, and system that out, right, pretty simple, I just created like a this stream with this array list, and I just call the function process, that is doing the validation of these processes. And I just printing the result of that one. Pretty simple, I'm not doing anything. But the completeness means that when we have like a, this hierarchy of the classes, again, an interface and two implementation of that interface, I need to be ensure that these functionalities are almost complete. Can you imagine that, for example, I'm not doing all validations here. So I'm just doing, for example, the validation of the parameter day time, but I'm not doing the implementation of the night time. So again, the Java code, the compiler is quite smart in order to say, okay, there is something strange here and you need to implement something else because this uh, parameter or this switch validation doesn't cover all the expected values in this case implementation of day time day of time of day so one suggestion is to add all the implementation of the classes but Another different scenario is to add the default branch. But probably is not a good recommendation in order to have the default branch, because probably in your code, you need to, to implement something else if you are adding some classes or another different validations for your classes hierarchy. So my recommendation is try to check your implementations, if you need to add the default branch when you are doing these validations will be nice, but try to ensure, try to be strict in order to add the classes for this one. Uh, also, it's a good recommendation to have like a default validation if you need it to apply. So that's the, the, the thing that I wanted to mention when we are using the completeness. And probably it is linked with the, with the types uh, that you mentioned order. I know that you are talking about the generic ones, but if we are using this uh, completeness functionality, maybe this is linked with the topics that you are mentioning. So here, we just wanted to have like uh, the final functionality that I wanted to share with you, that is the guarded pattern. What means guarded pattern? In order to show you, I will create another scenarios. So again, I just wanted to remove here my code. I just wanted to create like a class, uh, for example, uh, vehicle. I don't have something special in this vehicle, but I was I just wanted to create like a subclasses or for that one. Extends vehicle. And I just wanted to create another subclass. 
or extend cycle, but this class have like an special information for that. The first one I just wanted to create like uh, the boolean value. Electric. I just wanted to create the constructor for this one. Public. Car. Lean electric. I just wanted to initialize this variable. So this dot electric equals electric. And I just wanted to create my getter for this variable. Public is electric and is electric. Nothing fancy, nothing complex. I just created a class, a super class that this name is vehicle to implementation of that classes, truck and car. But there is one validation here that I wanted to do that is about the electric one. So in my list here, in my switch validation, I just need to change something here. I could create something like this one. The validation of the super class here in the process functionality and i will just make the validations here so case truck uh, and i just wanna to say something like this so um, yes and i just wanted to do the validation for the car and the car, okay, it does gas, but electric. And I just wanted to do like a validation for the case one, for example, or the default one branch. And I just wanted to do here track. I just wanted to do here like the car true and new car false. Call in the same process and print the functionality here. I will run my class. So the first track is fine, add gas. But for the second and the third one, I'm just doing something quite different because I'm doing the validation for this car. But what happened if my car is electric? So here appears the another feature about this pattern matching functionality. So we can do or we can perform several scenarios here. But the most simple one is to add something specifically here in the case validation. So I just can do something here that and C plus is electric. I just wanted to add something like, uh, for example, plug in. That if it's not electric, So I'm doing two different validations here in my pattern matching in my switch case scenario. One is about the instance of, of the type of class functionality that is the car, but also I can doing or I can do another scenario here that is get some specific characteristic, some specific variable inside of the class and validate something else. Let me just try to validate here how it is going. So again, I have one truck, one car that is electric and one car that is not electric. So for that reason, I'm getting at gas, plug in and at gas again. Um, you can add uh, as many validations as you want 
but my recommendation is to have this very small because probably we can face the problems that we usually wanted to avoid that is that makes the complex not easy to understand not easy to read and maybe the refactoring of that code could be harder in the future so try to keep this code clean as possible and only use this special scenario or this gather guarded pattern in some specific cases if you wanted to include this functionality uh, again try to link or try to use this functionality as i mentioned it before so for example if you need to add like a new validation will be nice to have that one because probably in the scenarios that you need to work you need to include this uh this this validations alive because if you don't know how the, the the messages are coming for your process or for your validations or for your evaluations you need to, to add something like that um, let me add another here and that is about the guarded part so is it possible to add some specifically in the case validations in order to extend your functionality about your pattern matching cases and that's it pretty much so i just wanted to recap what we were talking we were talking about the instance of and the objects creation in the instance of validations, the types ma type matching that appears with the switch case validations, the nulls that could be validated also in our switch cases, the dominance that can appear about the hierarchy of the classes or interfaces, and is a really pretty one because you don't need to forget what is the precedence of this hierarchy of the classes. The completeness is talking about that you need to, to implement all the possible scenarios or you need to implement the default validations in the switch case scenarios. And the guarded pattern means that you can append another validations if you need to add something else in your validation of the switch cases. That is pretty much that I just wanted to share with you. I know it's probably quite hard to understand what we are doing, but my biggest recommendation is try to get deeper about this functionality and try to apply in your projects. As I mentioned, it, this functionality appears like at the first preview in the Java 16. Right now, we are in the second preview for, for example, the pattern matching and the guarded patterns in the Java 18. But my recommendation is try to get more knowledge about that one, try to apply in your projects, try to make like a little refactor in your projects that you are working with. And if you have possible to include in your projects will be nice. Um, again, uh, thank you very much, Arthur, for your time, for your space and all my best wishes for Ukraine. Uh, I know that is a uh, super uh, difficult time for you. Uh, Shori, you mentioned it, the if it's available in the Java 17, just yes, the pattern matching, for example, the object creation in the, in the type of sentences, and also the switch validation is also available, but there are like a minor discrepancies. So yeah, it could be available, but you need to be really conscious about these functionalities before for example in the case scenarios the pattern the guarded pattern are not full available in the java 17. so if it's possible to migrate to, to 18 will be nice because you can get all these functionalities in java 18. Um, if you have more questions feel free to chat feel free to share me uh, uh, you have my email here, try to contact me, or if you have another space, I will try to contact you. Thank you very much, Arthur, and thank you very much for your time.